Hi friends, Sharon Thomas here from Established Footsteps Ministry. And you know we are finishing up a month of being in the amazing chapter of Hebrews 4, which is all about the rest that God has for us. And I, I pray that it has been a really beneficial month for you, that God has opened your heart and mind in new ways to just the calming peace of life that He wants you to experience every single day. I have long loved this chapter, but every time I come back to it, God just continues to speak to me uh, through it, sometimes reminding and affirming things that he's shown me in it before, and sometimes bringing about fresh insight. And this month, one of the things that he has done for me is just really drawn um, some parallels for me between physical rest and then this spiritual rest that he is offering to us as a gift. And you know, um, there's so much that we could look at here. And you know that at the end of each of our months of study in Me and My Bible, I like to gather with you around that passage for one last time for us together. Hopefully it's not gonna be the last time you ever visit it, but you know, as a group collectively, I love to gather with you around that. And there's so many places I could have gone with that because we could zoom in on just one verse or one phrase or maybe even one word. This, this chapter's so rich. But I really believe that uh, the Lord would have us to look at it as a whole and just to consider some of these parallels that he's been putting on my heart this month in regards to how our spiritual rest really in a lot of ways uh, we can learn as we set it against a backdrop of how we handle our personal rest. You know, within this chapter, there are some definite responses that we are called to. And you know, as we think about our physical rest and then our spiritual rest, which honestly, I believe our spiritual rest even encompasses our physical rest, but we are all very familiar with what it means every day, right? To go to bed at night, to get a good night's sleep, to wake up fresh for the new day. We do that. That's the rhythm of our life, unless we're very, very young, right? When we're very little, a lot of times our rest is on all kinds of wacky patterns and that's why when a baby is born, it takes a while to get them used to days and nights, right? And even when we're young and immature, we tend to sometimes resist rest. I mean, how many of us as parents have, you know, had to put the baby in the car seat and go for a drive, just hoping to put the baby to sleep, right? And sometimes we do the craziest things to just help the baby go to sleep or how many of us as parents have had toddlers and you know or even young school children and it's time for bed and they run and hide because they don't want to go to bed they resist the rest but as we mature as we grow up and mature we become wise to how important physical rest is for our bodies and i believe in the same way god has been speaking to me that as we grow and mature in christ and we we, we realize the rhythm of rest on a daily basis that God has offered to us spiritually, that we wanna do everything we can to respond and claim that rest and take hold of that rest and never ever be without it. You know, I physically cannot go one full day without rest. Like I can't just say once a week, you know, not sleep that night because I got things to do or I wanna, you know, play or do whatever. I, I can't do that. And I know that physically. As a child, I, I know that as a, as a mature adult. As a child, I didn't always know that. There were times that I would stay up all night, right? And, and you probably as well. There were times that I would, you know, as even a very young adult, I would drive through the night to get an extra day on my vacation so that we could get there earlier, you know? And, and I could maybe even handle that a little bit. But as I've grown up and matured, I've realized rest is not an option for me physically. And you know, as I leave this chapter this time, I want to establish my steps of daily life knowing that spiritual rest is never an option, a lack of spiritual rest is never an option for me, like going without it. You know, we saw how God offers us rest every single day. He says this every morning we wake up, you know, there's this new sense of his mercy, of his rest that he offers for us for that day. And I never wanna be somebody that, that you know, disregards it or pushes it away. So how do we respond? How do we respond? Well. I think there's four things that we're called to. And they all begin, if you're reading the New American Standard Bible, which is what I study from, and I think even some other versions do this as well, 
but there are four times that we are called to a response and they begin with the words let us let us verse 1 tells us let us fear it calls us to a place of fear and that's not a place of like shaking in fear it's a place of being very careful we'll talk about that more in a moment verse 11 calls us it says let us therefore be diligent and I shared earlier this month about how that word diligent carries a connotation of haste or hurriedness with it. It's also the idea of doing your best and giving your all, like pushing through, making sure that. When we skip down to verse 14, we're called to another response. Let us hold fast our confession. We're going to talk about what, what that means. And then in verse 16, it says, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace. Some versions say, let us come boldly before the throne of grace, that we might receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In other words, that we could just live in that place of rest. So these are the responses that we're called to. And I want us to spend a few minutes looking at them in light of uh, a backdrop of physical rest and how we as mature people, you know, respond to our need for physical rest and then really set that alongside and say, you know, how does that speak into how I can, you know, enact these calls to, you know, be, um, be careful and to be diligent and to hold fast and to draw near with confidence. Before I jump into that, I want to reiterate what I believe are the top three truths in this chapter regarding rest. Now, if you were to zoom in on, you know, say verses 12 and 13 about the word of God, we could pull out some other top three truths or you know, down into the part about his presence in verses 14 through 16, there's some other truths that I would center on. But when we're looking at this chapter as a whole, being about rest, the conversation is about the rest that God has for us. I think there's three truths that we've gotta just, you know, put a stake in the ground on. The first one is this, that God offers us rest. It is a gift from him. He wants us to have it. He knows that we need it. He knows that needs to be the rhythm of our life, just like we have a physical rest rhythm that we, you know, participate in every day, that we've got to participate in this spiritual rest that God has for us. It's a gift from him. That would be truth number one. The second and third truth really go together in that the way that we get that rest, you know, physical rest, we get by climbing in a bed, laying our head on a pillow and going to sleep. Spiritual rest comes from uniting our lives with the word of God. This chapter is very clear about that. How God's word speaks into every part of our life and it's living and active. And our job is to unite our lives with it, to co-mingle our lives with the word that God has spoken to us. To not just know that word, but actually unite it and then to come into the presence of Jesus, where the door has been thrown wide open, we can come into the throne room and receive the mercy, the grace that we need, and that, I believe, in his presence, that's where he makes the word that he's spoken to our life, it's where he makes it personal. It's where he makes it come alive and be active. So those would be those top three truths. God gives us the gift of rest, we find it by uniting our lives with his word and with his presence. So keep those things in mind, and let's look at these parallels that I, I want to share with you in regard to these responses that we're called to in this chapter. So the first one is this. Verse 1, let us fear. In other words, let us be very, very careful. Some versions actually say, let's be careful. Let's be extremely careful to ensure that we take hold of this rest. Now think about that in terms of physical rest, your physical sleep. You know, I have come to the place in my life, I shared this a moment ago, where I've realized physical rest is not an option for me, being without it, okay? I have to have my physical rest. So I am very careful. The way I think about doing life, I always have that element of knowing that I need, you know, at least six hours, seven's even better, and eight is optimal every single day within a 24 hour period. And I am, you know, in my mind, in the way I think about life and how I'm going to go through the rhythm of, of just doing life, that's got to come into play. I'm very careful about that. I'm very careful to make sure that that happens. It's not an option for me. It's not something that I'm going to live without. 
Well, in the same way for our spiritual rest, have I come to the place, have you come to the place where our response is that we realize it's not an option to go without spiritual rest? Like, I can't do that, you know, every few days, just, you know, stay up all night physically. Well, I can't do that every few days either spiritually and just kind of go off and do my own thing and ignore the word, ignore God's presence because I can't live. As I've matured in Christ, I've realized I can't live without the spiritual rest that God gives me. And I'm gonna stop resisting it. And I'm gonna be very careful. I'm gonna fearfully, like reverentially, be careful to make sure that I'm taking hold of this rest. That needs to be my response to this gift of rest that God has offered to me. What about down in verse 11 where it says, let us be diligent, let us be diligent to enter that rest, to enter that place of calm and peace, a calming of the winds that God offers us every single day. Let's, let's be diligent to do that. It says, lest anyone fall through following the same example of disobedience. We got to look at people in God's word who just totally disregarded the rest that God gave them. They didn't ever unite their lives. They weren't diligent. Are we going to respond with diligence? You know, as I parallel that alongside physical rest, I think about not only for myself, but just all the other things I've seen people do, where we are very diligent to make sure that we get the rest that we need. You know, in our culture, we make sure that we have a bed. We make sure that we have a bed. In fact, some people spend enormous amounts of money on the right mattress to make sure to be diligent that they are going to get the rest that they need. We're very careful about the pillows that we have. I pretty much, when I'm traveling, I carry my pillow with me. I have this contour pillow. I have a satin pillowcase on it. Um, you know, I, I want that to be, uh, I'm very diligent about taking care of that. Many people are very diligent about making sure the temperature is a certain temperature in their room when they sleep, that there are blackout curtains, that it's very dark, that there's a fan going. I know recently my nephew and his wife visited us and they have a little baby and uh, she needs this kind of whirring noise that this fan makes that they have. It's a big box fan. So even though they were just coming for the day, she needed to take a nap and they came through the door with that box fan. They were being diligent to make sure that their baby was gonna take a nap. You know, we all have these things that we do to make sure we're diligent, right? We're careful. We're diligent to make sure that we enter that physical rest. In the same way, what are we doing to make sure to be diligent that we're entering spiritual rest every single day? I think sometimes we're so diligent to get that physical rest and then we just kind of hold our hands up to heaven and just expect God to drop it on us as far as spiritual rest. And when he doesn't, then we just get into more spiritual unrest. In reality, that is an error of thinking. Yes, physical rest and spiritual rest are a gift to us, but we have to be diligent to enter both of them. And God calls us here to be diligent by being in his word, uniting our lives with the words that he speaks to us, and then getting in his presence so we can understand that word. And so that word can really become personal and alive and active for us. We gotta be diligent, just like we would for our physical rest. That has really spoken to me this month. You know, as I've come back to this chapter over and over again through the years, God just layers things on, and this is fresh and new to me. And so I've really been pondering and meditating on these things, and I hope that they are encouraging you and, and you know, causing light bulbs to come on and making sense and in your heart. But what about the next one in verse 14? Holding fast our confession, right? Holding fast our confession. In many ways, I think this is very similar to uh, the first one about let us fear or let us be careful. Although that one, the first one, I think that let us is more of a mindset, whereas this one, let us hold fast our confession, is more of a doing. It really goes um, hand in hand some ways as well with being diligent, okay? Let us hold fast our confession. It really means to hold firmly to something, to cling to something, you are not going to let it go. You know, as I have matured and I know that I have to have my rest physically, there are times that people will invite me to go places and maybe they're going to be out really, really late. And more often than not, I will say no. Why is that? Because I am holding fast to the fact that I know that I have to have my rest. 
I look at the day, the next day, and I'm like, uh, you know, I gotta be up at 5 a.m. I cannot stay out till midnight. I cannot stay out till 11. I I'm not gonna be able to join you for that. Even though I'd love to, right? Right, why? Because I'm holding fast to what I know to be true, that I need my physical rest. Well, you know what? I need to hold fast and you need to hold fast to the confession that we have made this month in this chapter. We need spiritual rest on a daily basis. We can't go without it. And we got to hold on to that. So it's going to require that sometimes we say no to things. We say no to the enemy's voice who is telling us we'll never have rest again in a certain area of our life. Maybe a circumstance that has arisen and it's causing so much turmoil for you. You know what? The enemy's going to just like pronounce doom and gloom and no rest for you for the rest of your life. You say no. No. My confession is that God has given me rest. It's a gift for me. And I know that and I hold fast to that. I don't, I don't let that go in any way, right? And so there are things that we're gonna have to do to hold fast to our confession. And those would vary depending on you know, what's going on. But I, I hope we can take hold of that and, and realize that that needs to be our response to rest. But what about as well, this last one that we find in verse 16 where it says, let us draw near with confidence. Some versions say, let us come boldly. I love what the message says. It says, let's walk right up to him, come freely, right? And, and just get what God has offered to us, not in an arrogant way, but in a grateful way. You know, going back to that idea of physical rest. I love climbing in my bed at night. <laughs> I love my bed. I, I, I love to sleep. I, I, I realize I've matured to the point I know how good it is. And when I get in my bed every night, I am confident, right, that I'm going to get a good night's rest. Now, I know some of us struggle physically with sleep, and that's a conversation for another day. But in, in my circumstance, I can speak, and I think, you know, um, maybe the analogy won't ring totally true for you, but just follow my line of thought here. When I climb in my bed, I am confident that my bed's going to feel good, that it's going to be a place where I can get a good night's sleep, and that it's going to deliver for me. Well, in the same way, I think what this is calling us to do is to be confident that we have been given access to come into the throne room of God and to talk to the Lord and to know that when we come, He's going to deliver. It's not like, well, I'm going to come talk to Jesus about it, and I hope... I'll feel better. I hope that he's going to give me rest. No. Every time I come into the throne room, I know that I know that I know that Jesus is going to have rest for me. There are times that I travel to other places, and even though pretty much I'm a pretty good sleeper, on the first night, I usually don't sleep well in places. There are sometimes I never sleep well at a place. I go to the bed, and the bed's not comfortable. It's, it's too soft. It's too hard. Whatever, right? The room is too hot. I, I, I don't feel comfortable there, right? And so there's not a sense of confidence that I'm going to get a good night's sleep, and I don't. And I think sometimes that's the way we come to the Lord. Like, we don't have that confidence of knowing that He has the rest that He's offered to us, that His presence is what we need to calm the winds in our life. God calls us to a response here, and it's to come confidently to the throne room that I can receive the mercy and grace that I need. And I do that daily physically, and I need to do that daily spiritually. You know, there are times when I get really tired that I'll take a nap during the day on my bed. And there are a lot of times where, you know, it's not just once that I come into the throne room. I come many, many times, right? Because I need that rest, that, that provision of spiritual rest that the Lord offers to me. So, so important to make sure that spiritual rest is a part of our daily rhythm of life that we know it's a gift for us, that we realize it comes as we unite our lives with the Word of God. There are so many other words floating in our lives, in our hearts and minds, but we need to unite our lives with the Word of God, and we activate all of that by getting in His presence and letting Him minister that Word to us in a personal, personal way. How will we respond to those truths? My prayer for my own life is that I'm going to be very careful, that I'm going to be diligent, that I'm going to hold fast to that confession, and that I'm going to draw near with confidence so that I can find that rest. Looking at that in light of physical rest against a backdrop of physical rest has really helped me this month to grab hold of that even in a richer way, and I hope that it does for you as well. I always love to hear from you. You know that. I say that all the time, but I love to hear from you 
hearing how God is using this word to speak to you. Maybe he's used a whole different analogy, different way as you've drawn into the throne room and he's spoken this word over your life this month. Maybe it's something different. I'd love to hear about it. We'd love to hear about it. Please share on the Facebook community group for that or you know, send me an email and just, just let's chat about it. I'd love to do that. I'm also very excited about our upcoming study for the month of July. Uh, we'll be beginning that in just a few days. You know we're in the middle of a catch-up week this week, just the way the calendar fell. So I hope that you're finishing up Hebrews 4 well. And you know this video has just been an added um, addition to all of that. But I'm looking forward to July and I want to encourage you to invite um, other people to join you in the study of our new passage. We'll be announcing all of that very soon. You know, I always like to encourage you, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, to go ahead and do that. That way, when we drop new videos, you get a notification if you also hit that bell, and uh, you'll just be you know, able to get to those videos easily. So we, we have more to come, more to come, and God's putting some neat things on our heart about some things we're gonna be sharing through our YouTube channel in the coming days as well. So I'd love for you to be a subscriber there, and it also helps us just to be able to share this channel and to share the things that God is teaching through his word here. So encourage you and invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. As you know, I'll be in touch again soon. I keep showing up, right? And encouraging you to be in the word, encouraging myself. Uh, that's a call of my life and I love doing that. So I will see you again soon. Be blessed, be at rest. All right, see ya.